Hey there, welcome back to Sleeve M. Um, I hope everybody is enjoying the wonderful holiday season. I know I am. Today I kind of wanted to talk about um, my psychological evaluation. Again, this was requested um, in order for my insurance to cover this procedure. And I think it's probably one of the most important parts that we just don't always talk about. I know I wasn't quite looking forward to this. As I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, this is also something that you really do not want to put off to the last minute. When I was getting ready, this is one of the first things that I did because I know that sometimes it's difficult to get in. So they gave me a list of 10 psychologists that I could go see to get my psychological evaluation. I probably called four to five of them. Only one of them actually called me back. Um, and, that, and then right away I scheduled with her for the earliest appointment, which was, I want to say about two to three weeks. So I was actually pretty impressed about how fast she could get me in. When I spoke with her on the phone, one of the things she said is that I could either do cash pay or I could run it through insurance, but I would have to figure out how much insurance charged before I saw her. So she gave me the proper CPT code or the procedure charge that she would have been charging my insurance. And I have to say I was pretty shocked that it was $1 cheaper to go through my um, insurance. So psych visits, I guess, aren't always well covered as other visits have been much better covered and it's not just because obviously because I you know haven't met my deductible this year it's you know it's still <laughs> that was more than 10% um, of a difference so I made my appointment with her I went and saw her and you know she kind of wanted to talk about have I been previously depressed am I on any depression medicines anything like that she made me bring a list in of all my medications that I was taking. She said that she was pretty shocked that I haven't had any depression issues. She said most people she sees that are overweight have depression issues. I know when I get stressed and things like that, that I do emotionally eat. I also comfort eat and probably enjoy eating <laughs> so I might have all the issues when it comes to eating obviously but she was really shocked that I had no actual depression I don't feel that I'm a very depressed person I feel pretty happy I feel pretty upbeat you know I enjoy life and you know as I talked about before the main reason I was doing this is just to feel healthier but I do think that come the surgery there are going to be some psychological mental blocks that are going to be kind of difficult for me to overcome. So we basically sat there and we talked about what, you know, made me obese. And I said a lot of it, I think, is genetics. If you were to look at my family, we're not the skinniest bunch. We also probably don't have the healthiest eating habits coming out of Thanksgiving, which is a very carb forward <laughs> Um, dinner, you know, we definitely, you know, eat some, you know, probably not the salads aren't the most important for us. And our salad may have, you know, a sugary <laughs> salad dressing or a fatty salad dressing. So I can't say that we're overly amazing. Um, but I, one of the things that we really talked about that I thought was kind of interesting is, and it just kind of came out I don't know where from, out of nowhere, that in my mind, I always kind of saw myself as a thinner person, but the reality is, is that I'm not thin. And one of the things that I really needed to work on was accepting that I'm a bigger girl and that I need to focus on taking care of that issue. I thought that was incredibly helpful when she talked about that with me. Um, she also said, you know, I might have some resentment, you know, as a child, I did not care so much. I always figured at one point in my life, I'm going to lose this weight 
and she said, this is your time to do it. So she was incredibly helpful. I think when I think about all the mental issues that I'm going to have, she did talk to me about, don't be afraid, you know, to call me to make an appointment. I'm already established patient with her, so it'd be easy for her to get me in. And I agree with that because I think my overall thought is about getting healthier, about losing weight, moving around, having more energy, things like that. But in our lives, just thinking about everything that we're going through with the holidays and everything right now, we use food so many times for celebratory, for you know entertainment, for what we do. Typically, when I'm visiting somebody, you know, it's we go out to dinner and that's what we do. And so I've been mentally trying to prepare myself for what I can do instead of going out to eat or making dinner for somebody or what we can do because my eating style is going to be changed. So one of the things that we had recently at work was our Thanksgiving potluck, which is probably my favorite potluck at work of the year. We go all out. We do, I always kind of roast a turkey and then everybody brings their side dishes, which are, you know, the mashed potatoes and everything. It's a completely gluttonous meal, right? And you can smell it throughout the morning when you're checking in patients. You can smell it cooking in the break room. And it's just an exciting day at work. Um, one of the doctors, he carves the bird and it's, it's just really fun. And so I thought, you know, I ate the meal and I enjoyed it. And then afterwards, you know, when you're feeling incredibly full, I was thinking about how different next year is going to be when I go through Thanksgiving dinner. Um, not only at work potluck, but at home. And I thought, I'm going to have to, you know, think through this. I'm going to have to sit down the, day, the night before and mentally prepare myself. When I go to that line to grab my food, you know, I need to make sure that I'm focusing on the turkey, the things like that, and making sure that I'm breaking taking the smallest things. I can't say that I'm completely going to skip the mashed potatoes because I love them and the green bean casserole, which are my favorites. But I also have to remember that this is one meal a year and that I may need to cheat. But at the end of the day, you can't over cheat because your stomach's only going to be so big. So I've been kind of thinking through in my mind how I'm going to deal with these situations next year when they come around. Last night we had our work Christmas party, which is always a good time. Um, you know, they give out lots of money. Last night was casino themed. I am not a gambler, so I don't really gamble anything. But, you know, they had this spread. They had chicken and waffles, spare ribs, mashed potatoes with bacon toppings and sushi which I love sushi and how I'm going to go through these things. And so again, this morning I've been really thinking about how next year at this party I'm going to go through and, you know, be, I mean, in my mind, I'm going to be a lot more intense with my thinking of making sure I'm grabbing the protein things, but I might have one or two cheats and it's going to be okay. You know, I think at the end you have to realize that those cheat days, psychologically, you have to kind of mentally prepare so you don't overdo it. But know that the next day is a new day and I'm going to stick to the meal, the high protein meals that we have been working, I've been working on and to continue back on my original plan, which is getting healthy. I think I had, um, I had somebody once tell me that they had the, one of the bariatric procedures and they were in their fast food parking lot, you know, emotionally upset because, you know, that was a food that they loved and that that's no longer a possibility. And I think those type of things are going to be difficult. You're going to have to, I'm going to have to take myself out of the usual circumstance. Yesterday we went shopping and we stopped at a barbecue place for lunch and I had to think, you know, I typically get the two meat combo, but next year 
maybe just getting a side of some of the meat would be just fine. Um, and just mentally preparing myself for those hard things and not being afraid to admit when I'm having some type of psychological issue or a mental breakdown. I think looking at pictures of myself from where I started is going to be a good thing to do. And then also watching these videos, I think it'll tell me why I'm doing this, what my overall goal is, and that I can't let, you know, one meal scare me or one food that I used to like scare me. I need to stay on the plan of why I'm doing this, keep my focus, and keep going. So hopefully as time goes on, my mind will eventually change. I hear a lot of people tell me that, you know, they enjoy eating, they enjoy the taste of food, but the need for food is not as, as important as our overall lifestyle. So I hope mentally that's where I'll become, but I would be lying to you to say that I feel 100% confident. There are times where I'm second guessing myself on, am I making the right decision? And I believe that I am, and I trust that I am. So so if you'd like to continue um, following me on this journey, make sure that you subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications. If there's any concerns that you're feeling inside, um, if you're going through the same thing, or any, um, if you've already gone through bariatric surgery, any support to help us get through those mental issues, please feel free to comment down below. And then I will see you next week on Sunday.